I'll start by acknowledging many colleagues, many students and, and staff who have contributed to this research, but also many cancer survivors. All of these studies require voluntary participation from people like you. That helps us generate knowledge that can be used to help other cancer survivors. So this uh, field probably started about 20 years ago and has just expanded rapidly in the last decade. These are the types of questions that have guided the research programs uh, in this area. First and foremost, is it safe to exercise during cancer treatment? Uh, will exercise interfere with treatment or response? So at a minimum, we want to make sure that exercise doesn't interfere with your ability to complete these treatments and benefit from those treatments. Beyond that, uh, can exercise help manage treatment side effects, a very important issue related to the control of symptoms. But perhaps um, uh, the most compelling and exciting question for many is, uh, can exercise lower the risk of recurrence and improve survival? So if I start exercising after I'm diagnosed with cancer, can I really have an impact on my chance of recurrence and long-term survival? So I'll share with you what I think are some very exciting data on that uh, topic today. Uh, and lastly, what is the optimal exercise program? Is there certain types of exercise, certain amount of exercise that's beneficial for cancer patients as they go through treatments and beyond? It's a very large field that I can't uh, cover in a 35-minute talk. Uh, there's hundreds and hundreds of studies now that have looked at the role of exercise in cancer patients. But if you're interested, there's all sorts of uh, reviews on this uh, area that summarize the research that can be useful to you. Uh, and there's enough research now that we have systematic reviews that focus by a cancer, by a type of cancer. So reviews for breast cancer, prostate cancer, colorectal, hematologic cancers, even lung cancer now. So whatever your diagnosis, you're very likely to find a, a systematic review on that topic. Most of the research is with breast cancer. That's where we know um, um, most of the information about the role of exercise. But these other cancer groups are getting more research attention. We also have reviews by the phase of uh, the cancer uh, treatment. So uh, early on, many of the exercise studies looked at uh, um, the interventions during treatment. So can exercise help cope with treatments and, and the side effects and symptoms? But a lot of research now in survivorship, that is after you complete your treatments, what's the role of exercise in the survivorship phase? And we even have a little bit of research on pretreatment or prehabilitation. Is there any benefits to doing exercise prior to starting cancer treatments. And lastly, um, some uh, research on for patients with advanced cancer or metastatic disease. But most of it is the active treatment period and the survivorship phase. Lots of outcomes we've looked at. Outcomes meaning what are the benefits of exercise for cancer patients. So fatigue has been something we've looked at. Many of you will experience fatigue and complain about fatigue. Very good evidence to suggest that exercise actually improves fatigue. It's patients who take it easy and rest whose fatigue gets worse. Uh, even research on psychosocial outcomes like depression, showing uh, exercise can help with mild to moderate depression as you're going through these treatments. Quality of life, very important, and survival. As I mentioned, this is an area that's gaining a lot of research attention, um, and we do have reviews looking at that. And even reviews now on different types of exercise. Most of the uh, research we've done has been traditional aerobic exercise programs. So these are things like walking and cycling. Uh, but there's a lot of research more recently on weight training or strength exercise. And you can see reviews about the benefits of weight training in cancer survivors. And uh, even more recently, yoga. Lots of stuff on yoga and sort of non-traditional exercise activities showing some benefits there. So that's kind of the big picture overview of, of the entire field and where we're at. What I thought I'd do today is share with you a couple of our very recent studies so you can see um, um, some of the recent findings suggesting potential benefits for patients. Before I do that though, uh, I guess I'll point out the whole uh, motivation and behavior change challenge for patients. And this is a, a survey study we did with non-Hodgkin lymphoma survivors, but we've seen this in breast and colorectal and other groups we've surveyed. And we asked them to report how much exercise they were doing before they were diagnosed, how much exercise they do when they're on active treatments like chemotherapy and radiation therapy, and how much exercise they do when they're off treatment or post-treatment. And this is a pattern, uh, as I said, we've replicated in uh, many studies. You can see that there's dramatic declines in exercise during treatment. So it's not obvious to patients that they should be exercising during treatment, and clearly they're not getting any support or interventions to try and promote exercise um, during treatment. And in that scenario, 
you get huge declines. Patients are not likely to be exercising on their own. You do get some recovery after treatment or post-treatment, uh, but the important thing is it's not back to pre-diagnosis levels. So you see that a cancer diagnosis and these treatments can have a permanent negative impact on how much people exercise. So this is part of the challenge uh, that we have in trying to help patients exercise, but also in generating the data to suggest that it is in fact safe and beneficial to exercise while you're on these treatments. So I'll start off with a trial we did uh, a few years ago. We called the START trial, supervised trial of aerobic versus resistance training. It was the first uh, trial to compare aerobic exercise to weight training in breast cancer patients, and really the first trial to tie the exercise intervention to the chemotherapy time period. So we asked these patients to exercise all the way through their chemotherapy. Multi-center trial with support from uh, Edmonton, uh, Roanne Siegel in Ottawa, and, and Don McKenzie in Vancouver. We did a very typical aerobic exercise intervention three times per week of supervised exercise. They could walk on a treadmill, they could bike, and we also did uh, a standard weight training program. Again, three times per week supervised exercise using all the different weight machines to try and build muscular strength. And the usual care group did not do any structured exercise during chemotherapy. Adherence was pretty good, about 70%. Um, exercise adherence can be a challenge for the general healthy population. You can imagine patients going on to chemotherapy. Uh, there's all sorts of challenges at that time. And most of the missed sessions uh, in this type of trial are really due to the medical complications, the, the severe side effects that can be experienced by some patients. We reported um, many important outcomes in this study related to improvements in fitness and psychosocial outcomes. But the, the finding that got the most uh, attention from this study was we tracked all the chemotherapy drugs that they received. So we tracked all the doses they received and any delays. And we're able to compute a variable that's called relative dose intensity. And that's the amount of uh, chemotherapy treatment you receive. And clearly, the higher the better. Patients want to receive all their chemotherapy doses, and they want to receive them on time. And our goal was really just to look at whether or not exercise might interfere with patients' to, uh, ability to complete these treatments. And as you can see from this slide, we actually found that the group that did weight training during chemotherapy completed more of the chemotherapy than the group that did nothing. And even the group that did aerobic exercise complete, completed a little bit more of their chemotherapy, suggesting that exercise not only doesn't interfere with patients' ability to complete the treatments, it might actually help. So a very important uh, and provocative finding. At the same time we had published this back in 2007, there was all sorts of observational data being published. And these are data where they just follow patients over time, looking at the role of exercise and linking it to cancer survival. And what all these studies have shown is that patients who report more exercise after their diagnosis have a lower risk of recurrence, lower risk of death from, in this case, breast cancer, and longer survival. But these are observational data. Um, um, where there's no intervention done, and so we don't know if there's differences between those patients who exercise and those who don't exercise. But nevertheless, it was suggestive that exercise not only might improve symptoms and quality of life, but may actually be linked to uh, improved survival. So with those data, we went back to our START trial and say, boy, we did a randomized controlled trial. We should actually follow these patients up to see how they did in terms of disease outcomes, in terms of recurrence, death from breast cancer, death from other causes. So we did that in 2012. The original study was done 2003 to 2005, so we had about eight years of follow-up, long-term follow-up on these patients. And we followed all the standard um, guidelines that they would do for chemotherapy trials on how we uh, assess the variables and survival analysis and so on. We combined the two exercise groups, the weight training and the aerobic exercise group, and we compared them to the group that didn't exercise during their chemotherapy. Much to our very pleasant surprise, eight years later, uh, this variable we call disease-free survival. So it's whether or not you've had a recurrence of breast cancer, death from breast cancer, death from any cause, or even a second cancer. So it's all kind of the important medical endpoints. We found that the exercise group had an eight-year disease-free survival of 82.7%, and the usual care group, the group that didn't exercise during chemotherapy, about 75.6%. So it's about a 7% absolute difference in this uh, disease-free survival variable. 
that is as good a benefit as you would get from chemotherapy trials. And if this were a drug, it would be put to market based on those types of improvements in survival. The hazard ratio about 0.68, suggesting that patients who exercised during chemotherapy had about a 32% lower risk of having one of these disease-free survival events. Now, it's a relatively small study. Only 242 patients uh, were in this study, and it's not a significant finding, meaning it's not reliable um, estimate of the benefit. But it's certainly in the right direction, and it's certainly, again, a signal that um, exercise is probably not interfering uh, with patients' ability to improve, uh, uh, to benefit from these treatments. And when you look at overall survival, so this is pure and simply death, death from breast cancer, death from any cause, again, a very nice magnitude of benefit. 91% overall survival in the groups that exercise during chemo, 82.7%, so about 8.5% benefit. Um, again, very um, positive finding, although not statistically significant, suggesting that exercise might help patients benefit from the chemotherapy, what we might call medically a chemosensitizer. So this is something we're following up on and exploring, but it's the first experimental data that suggests exercising during chemo may improve uh, disease-free survival and overall survival many years down the road. We followed this trial up with a trial we called the CARE trial, combined aerobic and resistance trial. It makes sense if aerobic and weight training are good alone, maybe we should combine them and get optimal benefits. Of course, that's a lot of exercise to be doing while you're going through chemotherapy, so we weren't sure patients would be able to complete that much exercise. Maybe it's too much exercise and that benefits are no longer there. So this is a study that really focused on the dose of exercise, how much, and the type of exercise. Um, and again, it was breast cancer patients who were going on to chemotherapy. Multi-center trial with the same group, Don McKenzie in Vancouver and Roan Siegel in Ottawa, as well as John Mackey in Edmonton. So the design was a little bit different here. We had a standard group that got a very rigorous exercise program. They came in 30 minutes per week of aerobic exercise. We know that's a beneficial intervention. So really now we're looking at the optimal type and dose of exercise. So the standard group uh, we know would get benefits from that type of intervention. The combined group, we added to that 30 minutes of weight training on top of their 30 minutes of aerobic exercise. And um, we could have done just a two-arm study there. The, the difficulty with that um, um, two groups there is if the combined group does better, we don't know if it's because simply they've done more exercise or because they've done weight training. Do we really need to add weight training or is it simply an exercise dose effect where more exercise is better? So we added a third group we called the high group, so the high amount of aerobic exercise. And we asked uh, that group to do 50 to 60 minutes of aerobic exercise three times per week. So we're really pushing uh, breast cancer patients in this particular study to try and find out what it, you know, how much can they do and how much can they benefit from. So here's the adherence overall of uh, very good, almost 90% uh, in the standard group, 80% and just under 80%. The standard group did have a little bit higher adherence, so clearly these um, higher uh, dose interventions are challenging, and uh, based on this trial, we've probably reached the maximum tolerated dose of exercise during chemotherapy. I'm not sure uh, patients can do much more exercise in about an hour, three times per week, but even with that, the adherence was quite good. This is what we find, though, huge declines in fitness from the chemotherapy, likely due to big declines in hemoglobin. So patients become anemic as they go through these uh, interventions, and even the effects of exercise on cardiorespiratory fitness are not able to manifest themselves because of these declines. And we've seen this in several of our trials. Nevertheless, the group that did more aerobic exercise had less decline in their fitness while they go through chemotherapy. Improvements in muscular strength are fairly standard. Those seem to manifest themselves much easier than any sort of um, cardiorespiratory fitness improvements. And so the combined group, as expected, improved strength, uh, more so than the groups that only did the aerobic exercise. But the real important findings were re related to how patients felt in terms of their functioning. So just to orient you to this slide, the baseline score there at the beginning is prior to starting chemotherapy. Uh, midpoint one is about a third of the way through chemotherapy, midpoint two, two-thirds of the way through, and then post-intervention is about three to four weeks after they've completed chemotherapy. And what you see here is there is decline in patient reports of physical functioning during treatment, 
with some recovery after treatment. But it's actually the high dose aerobic exercise group that benefited the most. And again, we know that that standard arm there, the one in blue, is very beneficial compared to no exercise at all. So these benefits are above and beyond uh, a standard aerobic exercise program. Similar finding for bodily pain uh, while they're going through chemotherapy. And a very interesting finding with uh, endocrine symptoms. So these are things like hot flashes and night sweats and other kind of menopausal symptoms that breast cancer patients can experience when they go through these treatments. And here we see an effect of both the higher dose interventions. Even though these endocrine symptoms are worsening over the course of treatment, uh, they're a little bit better in the groups that do the higher volume exercise, the combined group or the high dose group, suggesting that exercise might even help breast cancer patients deal with some of these uh, hormonal symptoms that get induced from the chemotherapy. Uh, we didn't have a significant effect on fatigue, but I show this um, data because if there's one variable you think might be exacerbated or, or made worse uh, from a very high volume of exercise, it would be fatigue, and no indication of that. The, the high group and the combined group still did better uh, uh, than the standard group compared to fatigue, although not statistically significant. And improved sleep quality also can be a very uh, important issue for patients going through these treatments. Here, higher scores are worse. So you can see with the standard group, they're accumulating sleep problems as they go through chemotherapy with some recovery afterwards. But both the higher dose interventions seem to sort of slow down that worsening of, of the uh, uh, sleep problems as they go through chemotherapy. So another important outcome that exercise can potentially benefit during chemotherapy. We did track all the drug dosing and chemotherapy delays once again to make sure that um, these high dose exercise interventions aren't interfering with patients' ability to complete treatments and there was no difference among the groups. So even 60 minutes of fairly high intensity aerobic exercise or 60 minutes of combined aerobic and, and resistance training exercise did not interfere with these patients' ability to complete all their drugs and complete them on time. Another trial I'll share with you, um, I think because it has very important outcomes, is uh, one called the uh, Healthy Exercise for Lymphoma Patients trial. And really, this is one of the few trials to focus on lymphoma uh, patients as a group. And here we compared aerobic exercise to a usual care or a no exercise group in 122 lymphoma patients. And the interesting thing with this trial is we had patients on chemotherapy and off chemotherapy. So we could directly compare what are the benefits um, on and off chemotherapy? How do they respond differently, potentially? 12-week supervised exercise program, again, very good adherence, 78%. So cancer patients can do these programs during treatments, and they can um, adhere to these types of exercise prescriptions. We looked at fitness, quality of life, and a number of other outcomes. So here I present the results overall, but also separately for patients who are on chemotherapy or off treatments. And what you can see here is the magnitude of the benefit is essentially the same, whether they're on chemo or off chemo. Uh, although how they get that benefit is slightly different. So the patients who are on chemotherapy, you can see declines in physical fitness as they go through the chemotherapy, but those declines are completely reversed with an exercise training program. In fact, they get very large benefits to fitness, almost a 20% improvement in VO2 max in a 12-week period. Same with the patients who are off treatment. They had the same amount of benefit, but as you can see from that slide, it's all gains in aerobic fitness. The quality of life changes mirror the fitness changes, almost identical. And this is uh, what we've seen in a couple trials where it's these improvements in fitness that really drive patients' improvements in quality of life. So if you're able to do these exercise programs and improve health-related fitness, oftentimes quality of life will improve uh, along with it. Fatigue, another important outcome, you can see uh, benefits both whether you're on chemotherapy or you're off chemotherapy, it's the patients on chemotherapy who did no exercise who fatigue uh, got worse. It's the ones that exercise who reported less fatigue. Counterintuitive finding, but a very consistent and important finding in the exercise literature. Again, sleep quality improvements, particularly for those patients who are on chemotherapy and having difficulties uh, with sleep, they benefit from the exercise intervention. 
We did look at chemotherapy completion rate in this group. It's a little different how it's looked at. Here we just looked at the number of cycles they completed, whatever was prescribed for them. Uh, and you can see no differences between the groups. If anything, the aerobic exercise group did complete a little bit more in terms of the planned cycles, but no statistically significant difference. So even in lymphoma patients, no evidence that exercise, high intensity interval training exercise would interfere with their ability to complete uh, chemotherapy cycles. But again, another very provocative finding, not statistically significant, um, so we're not 100% confident in the final, but very suggestive. The patients that were on chemotherapy in this trial, at the end of chemotherapy, their um, medical outcomes are judged as uh, being either stable, so the disease hasn't changed at all, partial response, meaning that the tumors have shrunk and started to go away, or a complete response, meaning there's no evidence of cancer. So that's obviously the best outcome. You complete chemotherapy and the doctors tell you, as far as we can tell, the cancer is gone. And again, if you look at uh, the comparison between the groups, in the uh, exercise group, about 46% of patients had a complete response to the chemotherapy. Only about 30% of patients who didn't exercise had a complete response to the chemotherapy. So very suggestive that uh, exercising during chemotherapy may sensitize the benefits of the chemotherapy and actually help patients get a better response. So in conclusions of this literature, um, exercise is safe during chemotherapy. I think that's well established. It certainly does not interfere, interfere with patients' ability to complete or respond. In fact, if anything, we think it's going to improve patients' ability to complete and respond to their treatment. Uh, it certainly manages some symptoms during chemotherapy, things like depression, sleep quality, physical functioning, pain, uh, and a number of other symptoms that uh, people have looked at do benefit. Exercise is certainly associated with these disease outcomes like recurrence and survival, uh, but we don't have these definitive what we call randomized control trials to prove conclusively that exercise can uh, reduce recurrence and improve survival. So certainly we can uh, promote exercise as a way of managing symptoms, improving quality of life, and hopefully down the road we'll be able to have evidence to say it does in fact uh, improve outcomes for cancer patients. As was mentioned earlier, uh, there are a number of published guidelines that um, cancer survivors can follow. Oftentimes local centers also have these guidelines. These are from the American College of Sports Medicine. This is all the exercise science experts who work in this area have come out with guidelines uh, very similar to the guidelines we would recommend for a healthy population, although uh, with a few caveats around that. Uh, these are the guidelines from the American Cancer Society. So even the cancer groups now are really encouraging exercise and of course healthy eating as well for cancer survivors. And they've adopted the same guidelines as the American College of Sports Medicine. So you can read either one and you'll get a consistent message of uh, the amounts and types of exercise that would be beneficial. I won't go into detail, but I'll give you a few sort of exercise and cancer principles for uh, cancer survivors. Uh, a cancer diagnosis may be a good time to start an exercise program. As you've seen from the literature today, there are benefits of exercising during your treatments if you are able to do that. Um, however, waiting till after treatments is also acceptable. We've done surveys of thousands of cancer survivors asking them when they would like to start an exercise program. And we get about half who say, yep, at the time of diagnosis and during treatment. And if you're able to do that, that is a great time to do it because of these additional benefits. But we also get about half of cancer survivors telling us there's no way I could have exercised during treatments. We know treatments can be very difficult and some patients can have severe side effects. So don't feel like uh, you absolutely have to be exercising during treatment. If the treatments are very difficult, wait until after treatments. But at that time, once you begin to recover and start to feel better, starting an exercise program at that time is very important. Uh, cancer treatments and the side effects can affect all aspects of the exercise prescription. And so it's certainly good to check with your oncologist. And if you can uh, get access to a certified exercise specialist like Daniel, uh, he can be of great benefit in helping you develop a program that takes into account uh, any symptoms or side effects that you've experienced. Uh, in terms of the guidelines, certainly avoid inactivity. There's a whole body of research I haven't discussed today just looking at sedentary behavior, meaning sitting uh, around all the time. 
uh, is not beneficial, even if you are exercising regularly. So ideally, standing throughout the day, moving around, even walking at light intensity may be beneficial. That research is going on, and these guidelines recommend try and avoid inactivity as much as possible. Some exercise is better than none. Even if you can't meet the guidelines that are being put out by these different bodies, doing some exercise is better than none. Don't feel like it's all or nothing. Well, I either have to do all of it or there's no benefit. Uh, and certainly, more exercise is better. You saw that with one of our trials today. Exercise really is kind of a dose-response behavior. The more you do, the more benefits that keep on coming. Higher intensity tends to be better, longer duration, more frequent, and so on. So depending on how you're feeling and whether or not you're able, um, there's sort of no amount of exercise that uh, is, is not likely to be beneficial. You definitely have to start easy and progress slowly, especially if you weren't exercising before your diagnosis. Uh, you want to start very low and progress it very slowly, and, and especially if you're on treatment as well, because exercise is a long-term commitment. The great news with cancer survivorship is many patients are cured and many patients live a very long time. So you have to think of this as a long-term goal that you want to keep exercising throughout the whole survivorship period. So that's the take-home message today. Don't take cancer lying down. Thank you for your time.